Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up this floating combat text, similar to something you'd see in like Apex Legends. That's kind of the game I copied it from. Um, so like always, I'll show you real quick um, exactly what it's going to look like when we're all finished. Um, also, one thing to note is that this works in a replicated scenario. So you can see I have a server on the left and a client on the right. So if I go ahead and I press my damage button, which just does like AOE damage, you can see it pops up above the player's head how much damage I am doing to him. And likewise, if I do it on the other screen and I damage this guy, you can see it pops up above his head and it stacks up nicely so you can kind of always see it. And then this little white sphere that's popping up, that's just the range of my attack. I'm just drawing it just so I can see what's going on. And then also just to show you how um, easy and dynamic it is to use. I also made this little cube over here and instead of popping up the amount of damage it pops up um, just some like words like oof or whatever and likewise it will work for this guy too and as you can see um, the only the person that's inflicting the damage can see the numbers or the text above the head um, nobody else can see it so it's only client side or it's only local and then I also in case anybody's interested um, Real quick before we get started, I just wanted to show you this in Samurai Zero, which if anybody doesn't know, Samurai Zero is just the game that I've been working on for a while. And if you wanted to see what it looks like in action, I'll just show you real quick, because I actually did it first in Samurai Zero, which is this game right here. And then I liked it so much, so I figured I'd make a tutorial on it. So as you can see, when I hit, hit him on the left here, you can see he gets numbers popping up above his head. Or if I were to do some sort of air dive attack, you can see you can see the numbers pop up above his head and the thing that i really tried to do to make it work well is i tried to make it so that no matter which angle you were hitting him from or whatever you'd always be able to see the numbers above his head nice and clear and i can show you that over here too because um even if the window is really small like this like it is on the right and i'm doing damage you can see the numbers still they don't overlap each other they still stack up and space out really nice Okay, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, one more thing I should mention before we get into this. Um, well, like I already said, this is this is replicated. So if you're not interested in replication, well, you can still follow along just fine. Um, and even if you write in all the replication code, it's not gonna matter if you're doing a single player game, it'll still work just fine. Um, the other thing is that we're doing some of it, a good amount of it in C++. Um, and the reason I'm doing it in C++ is because we actually need this function right here, which is only in C++ in order to get the things to scale correctly. And I figured um, a lot of you guys asked me to do C++ tutorials, so I figured I might as well just do um, the majority of this one in C++. And then also, it, we're in Unreal Engine 5. So this is my first Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. But if you are in Unreal Engine 4, then this will work just fine in Unreal Engine 4 as well, because there's really no difference for anything we're doing, at least. OK, so let me go ahead and close some of the stuff that I don't need. And then We'll be doing this from scratch. So let me just move this guy over here as a reference. And then I'm gonna open up the Epic Game Launcher. So if you already have a project, just go ahead and open that. Otherwise, if you wanna do this from scratch, then you'll need to make a new project, which is what I'm about to do. Okay, so again, I'm using Unreal Engine 5, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. But like I said, you could totally do this in Unreal Engine 4. There'll be a few differences. I'll try to point them out as we go along, but it's basically the same. Um, Okay, so we're going to select games over here, and I was using the third person template to start with, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Um, I'm actually going to leave this as blueprints, and then we'll add our C++ classes in later as we need them. And we don't need any starter content, so you can leave that unchecked. And then let me think what I should name this. Um, I'm actually just going to call this, well... I'm actually just going to call this my project because I don't want to call it anything specific because otherwise it's going to mess up my naming stuff inside of my project. So I'm just going to call this my project, but feel free to call it whatever you want. And then we'll go ahead and create it. And then just give it a second to launch here. Let me make sure I got... Okay, that's good. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is obviously just a fresh project. And sorry if I like forget where a button is because, again, this is the first time I'm making a tutorial on Visual Engine 5. Um, so I'm not 100% used to it yet, but it is pretty similar, so it shouldn't be too bad. All right, so let's see here. Um, I guess the first thing we can do is set up the little damage thing that I had before. Um, so let's go ahead and click on our player, 
and open up the third person character. And then inside of here, we will make it so that whenever we press the button, it will do like AOE or range based damage. So let's make um, let's make a new input binding. So if you go up to edit and project settings, and then you go to input, we want to add a new action mapping. So hit this little drop down and then hit the plus here. And we'll just call this our attack. Now, obviously in your game, if you have guns or whatever, then um, you probably don't need to do this if you already have something set up to apply damage. Um, the only reason I'm really doing this is just to be able to show off the floating text thing. Um, if you already have some sort of damage in your game, then you don't need to do this because um, it's actually really simple once you have damage set up to show this floating text. But for now, I'm just going to say attack and then we'll just bind it to the E key and close this. And then back over here in our player's event graph, we will say input action attack. And so this is going to get called whenever we press, press the E key. And then since we're going to be dealing damage, we want to make sure that that only happens on the server. So we're actually going to make a server version of this. So we'll say add custom event and we'll call it attack and then server. And let's come over here and say replication run on server. And there we go. So now we will run on the server. And then we just want to call this. So we'll right click and say attack server. And go ahead and call this whenever we press the press key or whenever we press the attack key. Okay, so now that we're on the server, we can actually apply the damage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use Unreal's built-in uh, damage system since it works pretty well. So we'll say apply damage and we wanna do radial damage since it's an AOE attack. So we'll say apply radial damage and then we'll hook that up. And then one thing, if you're new to Unreal, that's good to know. If you see this little server or this little computer thing up here at the top right, this little icon, this basically means that this node will only work if you're on the server. Um, so if I were to try to call this from up here, for example, like just like this, um, if we're not on the server, when we press the E key, then this won't actually do anything. So whenever you see one of these things, you should know that you basically have to do it on the server or else it just won't execute. But we're good because we are on the server. And then the base damage, um, I'm just gonna do a random number. So we'll just do random float and range. And we'll just say something from like 50 to 500. And then for the damage radius, we'll say 500. The damage type, I don't think this really matters because we don't have any damage types. So we'll just select damage type here. Um, the ignore actors, well, we definitely want to ignore ourselves. So we'll drag off of this and say make an array. And then we'll drag into this and we'll say get ref to self. Um, the damage causer is obviously going to be ourself since we are the one doing the attack. So we'll copy that. Um, instigated by controller is going to be our controller. So we'll say get controller. And we'll type do fall damage. So all this does is um, if this is true, then it will always do 500 damage, even if they're on like the outskirts of the radial damage. Um, if you uncheck this, then it will make it so the damage kind of falls off as you get further away from the center. At least that's what I think it does. Um, okay, so we got that. Oh, it's still mad about something. Oh, we forgot the origin. Um, so the origin, we want this to, or to originate from our location. So we'll just drag off of this and say get actor location. Like so, all right. And then let's also just really quickly draw a debug sphere so we can see it. Just say draw debug sphere. And then the center again is going to be this guy, which is our location. And for the radius, we'll also put 500. And this is just so we can see this, this little uh, circle thing. So let's go ahead and come back here to our main view. And then we wanna come here up here to play. And if you're in Unreal Engine 4, you'll have a similar drop down next to the play button. We wanna set the number of players to two. And we want to set the net mode to listen server. And this is all the same in Unreal Engine 4, so it shouldn't be hard to find it. So once we have listen server and number of players 2, we can go ahead and press play. Um, oh, actually, I'm going to just change this to new editor window. So that way we get two windows here. So we got one and two. And you can see at the top here, we got our server and we got our client. So if we press E on the server, Oh, it pops up, but it only pops up for a second. Let's change the, uh, let's go back here real quick. 
Let's change the duration to a second and the thickness to one, just so we can actually see it. And then let's press play again. Okay, so if we press E on the server, you can see we get a sphere that pops up around us for a second. And you also notice if we do it on the client, you actually don't see the sphere on the client, you only see the sphere on the server. And that's correct, and that's just because, if you remember, when we press attack, we're telling the server to go ahead and do the radial damage, and then the debug sphere is only drawn on the server. And the reason damage is only happening on the server um, in video games is because uh, it prevents cheating. So, you know, like, obviously you don't want the client to be able to modify his health. Um, only the server should be able to do something like that. So that's that's the reason for this. Okay, um, so now that we have a way to apply damage, we need to actually listen to that damage so we can get affected by it. So the way you do that is by this event, I think it's called uh, radial damage. Yeah, event radial damage. This, this will get called whenever you take any sort of radial damage, which is what we're doing here. So, um, let's just make a little function here to handle this. So on the left here, I'll make a new function with this little plus button here. And we will call this handle radial damage. Let me go ahead and make this private because nobody else needs access to it. And then for the inputs, let's take in a float for the amount of damage that we've taken. And then we'll also take in the person who attacked us. So we'll take in another parameter. We'll change it to an actor and we want object reference. And we'll just call this the damage causer. So basically the person responsible for causing the damage. And then back in the event graph, we'll just go ahead and hook this up like so and like so. All right, now if we come back inside of here, so now we can actually kind of start working on this floating text thing. So the first thing we want to do inside of here is we want to make sure that this is on the server because um, if this gets called not on the server, then we don't want anything to happen. So we'll just add a little switch has authority here. And if you've never used this before, this is basically just checking um, is are we on the server, which would have authority in this case, or are we on a client, which would be remote. So if we're on authority, then we want to actually do the floating text. So obviously we don't have that widget yet created. So if right now I'm just gonna add a print string just so we can make sure this is working. And then we will start working on the little text texture that pops up. So we'll say image taken. Actually, let's drag off with this list and say append. And then we'll say damage taken colon space. And then we'll just drag in the damage so we can see it here. So now if we run this and we walk over here and hit this guy, we can say the server prints out that he took damage or not that he took damage, but he just prints it out. And then if we do it on the server, we should get the same thing. So there we go. So both players can take damage and they're printing out their random number. Okay, so now that we have a quick little way to damage people. We can go ahead and start working on the floating text actor. Um, and I think I'll probably just do that in the next part of this tutorial. So I'll see you guys in part two.